Okay, let's now uh, try to connect to a server. And this is something critical actually in bioinformatics because usually most of the things that we will do um, we need some, some stronger machine than uh, the laptop that we use every day. For example, we need more memory. There are processes that need several uh, gigabytes of RAM, like uh, more than 100 gigabytes of RAM, and this amount of memory is not available in the laptops that we use every day. So, for many things, we have to use servers. And to do that, we need to have access to them. And we can use the command SSH, which is it means secure shell, so it encrypts the information, passwords, everything that we will send to the machine. Uh, the syntax of SSH is SSH, the username, at the IP address of the server, so this will be 139.91.75.56 for example. It's a server that we use um, uh, to uh, for, uh, for the classes. And then I need to specify the port ID. So if um, um, for, for several servers uh, they have some port closed, so I need to, to specify another port. And now I have entered the uh, server machine. So I'm not. So this terminal is not any longer on this machine, on the local machine, but it's on the server. Okay. Uh, and again, here I can uh, use the commands that we saw previously, like htop. Now, of course, here there are many, many more uh, threads that I can use. 32 available. Here there are more users, users that are running things. Uh, available memory on this machine is 129 gigabytes. Out of them, 42 are used currently. The load, and you see here that it's 755 days on. It means some, definitely some restart um, and updates. Okay. So again, Q to go out. And uh, now I can show you a way. So to, to enter this machine, I need to set to, to to specify a password. And also, if I want to send some files on this machine, I need to specify the password there. So, for example, if, if I want to send a file on this machine, let's do that. I just opened another tab in the terminal using Control T, Control Shift T. Let's say that I want to send this class coalesced IPNB to the server. I have to do SCP to use the SCP command and then the file and then the machine. Username again, the IP of the machine. And again, specify the port, etc., and to give a password. Just be careful when you write the command, specifying the port and then the, the file that you want to, to copy. Okay, let's see what file I want to copy. Class coalescent in. You need to, to press the uh, column here. The column, uh, and then I expect the folder that I want to, to put this file on this machine. So here, if I don't put anything, it will go to the home folder of this user. So it, it's the same like this one. If I want to send something somewhere else, then I can continue here with the path. So for example, like that, it will go to the documents folder of this uh, user. Okay. 
So this is the SCP command. Now the problem is that uh, if I want to send many files, every time I want, I need to specify a password. And so there are ways to avoid um, writing password all the time. And to do that, I can use the concept of uh, the keys. So let's see how to do that. Now I'm in the local machine. You can use the command minus ssh minus keygen. And then what type of uh, key I need to have. So let's say that I, I need a, an RSA key. It will ask me where to save the key first. So I have a key actually of this file already, IDRSA, so I will specify another one. Home.auto.ssh. You don't have to do that, you can use the default if you haven't done it before. RSA key 2, for example. This is a passphrase if I want to use a password, additional password or not. Usually we don't use. And this key has been saved in this file. And together with this file, this is the identification key, we have also a public key that it has been saved in IDRSA key2.pub. Okay, I go to this directory now, which is inside the home folder where I am now inside the SSH folder and then there is this file okay I can use the cat command to see the contents of this pub file and then I copy this key I can copy this key and put it in the server, so here, okay, uh, let's see where, okay, this connection dropped, so I will log in again in the server. Okay, I'm in the server, then I can I can go to .ssh and then <clears throat> I have copied already the key and I open these authorized keys and then at the bottom I paste the key that I have generated. Okay, <clears throat> I use the command nano to open uh, this authorized keys nano is an editor and uh, so the, the what will happen if I will do that is the following and if I will do a sage okay not here let's go out again and I specify the port and everything and I press enter then it will not ask for a password it will just log in immediately so I have a shortcut for that here so you see I didn't press any password I didn't type any password it, uh, it worked immediately so you may wonder how I did that that I don't give the IP address I, I just uh, specify the uh, uh, just a short name here uh, there is a trick to do that and for that you need to edit a file which is located here and it's called config so there is a file inside the .ssh folder that's called config and there I give all the details uh, for the server that I want to log in and also the short name which in my case it was the MSC ok let's see how to do that So the trick is 
which lines inside the config so host you need to you can write the shortcut that you want to use so now then if you type msc it will know here the IP address so here you specify the IP address right it's like uh, 139 um, 91 etc etc okay different numbers here right okay that cannot be so much something like that and then the port that uh, this connection will be established the username and again the username here and after that, if you do that and you save the file you can just type and you will know everything ok um, Okay, now you know also how to connect to the server, how to copy files to the server, and let's see some additional commands.